Today I'm going to teach you how to carve jack-o'-lanterns from store-bought foam pumpkins. Now carving your own jack-o'-lanterns from foam pumpkins is super simple, will save you so much money, and will last for years to come. So join me for this super simple and fun tutorial. To begin making our jack-o'-lanterns, we need foam pumpkins. Now, I always get my pumpkins from the store called Michael's, but you can also get it from Hobby Lobby or other retailers. Normally, you want to get it right after the holiday season so you can get the best discount, but sometimes they sell out so fast that it's best to get them before the season actually happens. So I got my pumpkins in August, but also I have some from last year, so we're gonna carve quite a few today. Next, we need the most important part, a hot knife. Now this hot knife gets really, really hot, so please don't touch the tip of it. We're going to cut out the jack-o'-lantern face after we mark it with a pen or pencil, after which, the final touch is putting an LED battery powered candle. Now these are plastic so they won't melt in the hot sun, but definitely get the ones that have a remote control and are battery powered. I use them every year, they are just perfect. Next, we need to find an image. I actually have several images that I use as an inspiration for the jack-o'-lantern. I freehand everything and I'm not good at drawing, but when it comes to a jack-o'-lantern, you don't want it to be perfect. You want it to be gnarly, you want it to be scary. So don't try to stencil something out or outline it. No, just get a picture as reference, get your pen or marker, and then just start drawing it out. Each one is gonna be individual, each one is gonna look awesome, so let's get started with that. Before we continue with this tutorial, I wanted to show you all the first book that I've written. It's called Little Olive and the Wally Bat, and it's rated for kids ages two to six years old. It follows a brave little olive that gets lost and is found by a very helpful brown bat. This is the first book I've ever written, and I'm super excited about it. It's available on Amazon via paperback or Kindle. So if anyone wants to support me or read it to their kiddos, go check it out. The link is in the bio of the video, Little Olive and the Wally Bat on Amazon. Now let's get back to this amazing tutorial. So foam pumpkins have a seam in the middle where they stuck both halves together. So make sure you don't carve it on this side, make sure you carve it on either side so that the seams are on the sides and the face can be right here. So I'm probably just gonna do it right over here and I'm gonna draw the face here. So I have my picture for inspiration and I'm gonna start drawing it with a pen, pencil, or marker. For our hot knife, I have this one right over here. I've used about four different brands, so I'm gonna link the two favorite ones that I have in the bio, so you can choose which of the two you wanna use. So here's the hot knife we're gonna use. It has the temperature gauge right over here, and these are the attachment it comes with. Most hot knives all come with these, but the only one we need is this one right here that looks like an X-Acto knife right here. This one gets super hot and it'll make cutting this so easy. So don't worry about that, just use the one that looks like an X-Acto blade, super sharp and it gets super hot, so please be careful. So we get our hot knife and then carefully we grab the blade, just screw the blade on like this. Carefully though. Then I have a pair of pliers here, you just wanna ever so gently tighten. See, you don't want to tighten it too much because you might break it. So now we'll plug it in and I'm gonna put it at the highest setting and we're gonna start cutting. So I've waited about two minutes and the knife is searing hot and I'm in a well-ventilated area or you want to do this outside because of the fumes from the foam. But just like this, we grab our pumpkin and just like that, we start cutting.
And here's our first jack-o'-lantern. It was super easy. This took me less than five minutes to make this one right over here. So to finish it off, we need to put the battery powered candle inside. So all of these have this sticker on the bottom, as you can see, we're just gonna peel this off. Then we're gonna get our candle. We're gonna put it like this, cause we need to cut it out. We need to cut out the opening. So let's just do this like that. Just like that. As you can see, that's what we need to cut out. So when we cut it out, you wanna make sure this candle fits snug in there. So you don't need to make the hole any bigger than the circumference of this candle that we're doing. And just like that, we have the place for the candle. Grab our candle and see, it fits snug just like that. But we want to make sure that this doesn't move. So we're gonna get our glue gun and with some hot glue, we're going to put glue all around this so it seals it in very nicely. And once we do that step, then we go over to the shading of the jack-o'-lantern to give it a more menacing look. So I realized that my camera wasn't recording, but basically what we did, as you can see, there's hot glue all over here. So we got our glue gun and we just put hot glue around it like this, just like that. So that still gives us access to the battery compartment, to the on off switch, and we're gonna leave it like this upside down for several minutes until this hardens. But that way the candle won't move or fall out and it'll be perfect just like that. Lastly, I'm gonna be using some outdoor acrylic paint and a small paintbrush and we're gonna paint all the inside of the mouth, of the nose, of the eyes, right here, all along the place. We're gonna get rid of all this white that you see, and we're just gonna go like that. And then, gently, we're going to paint the ribs, just like this, just like that, so that it has a more menacing look to it. We're gonna paint some over here. You don't wanna use a lot of paint, so make sure you're dabbing extra excess paint on maybe a piece of cardboard, or a piece of napkin where you're just putting a little bit of acrylic paint to darken the ribs and the whites of the cutouts. Once we're ready to put our jack-o'-lanterns outside, this is what I do to keep them upright. I have a two-hole pipe strap right here, and then I use two one-inch screws that I gently just screwed inside like this. Then I cut this PVC pipe to about 12 inches, and this one's diameter half an inch. And what we're doing is simply putting it in like this, and then once we get to the ground, we're just forcing it a few inches into the ground. Here in North Carolina, I have clay, so it's very easy for me to go into the ground a couple of inches. Um, so it goes into the ground like this, and it's held up like that. Actually, it's probably like this. I painted it orange so that it's less visible. And then in windy conditions here in North Carolina, it stays upright. Um, but this is optional because half of my pumpkins don't have this and they simply rest on the lawn just like this and they're fine throughout the season. Sometimes they may knock over but I simply put them back up. So this is something definitely if you have stormy or windy conditions where you live, it's perfect. Last but not least, you need to use this Scotchgard water and sun shield. This is optional but I totally recommend it simply because these tend to fade in the direct sun. This particular pumpkin is two years old. So I wanted to show you what it looks like after two years. It has this Scotchgard spray on it and it still looks orange and awesome and vibrant. While I have a couple other pumpkins that definitely faded. So if you want your pumpkins to last longer and look as vibrant, use this Scotchgard spray. To apply it, we simply spray the entire surface lightly, the front, back, the sides, everywhere and then once you've sprayed it, you allow it to dry. Another little uh, info bit, 
I did say this has lasted me two years, but I only keep these pumpkins out for about a month and a half starting in September. So in total, I think this pumpkin has been out in the direct sun for no more than three months. So if you plan to keep your pumpkins out longer, this may not last as long. So I have only reapplied it once a year and look how awesome it looks. But again, if you keep it out in the sun longer, it might fade more.